Because one of the great things about doing single stick fighting, stick against stick, is that since there aren't that many strikes, right? Either I'm going to feed an angle one or an angle two, it's a forehand or a backhand slash, forehand or backhand jab, or a thrust in there sometimes, uh, and then we can close the gap and all that. There, there aren't that many things to, to really deal with it. So it comes down to tactics. Tactics, not just faking out and all, but understanding sense of distance, setting things up how to fake the opponent out, because he knows how to block your angle one and angle two. So if he knows how to block your angle one and angle two, how are you gonna hit him with an angle one or angle two? So if we understand all those tactics and we can do it with the stick fighting, we can take those tactics and put it over into our, our regular empty hand. So let's look at the short clip, like 30 second clip of sparring, and then we'll talk about it. The first thing in that clip is that I was able to get in and really what happened is he thought he was at a safe distance, but I was still able to come in and hit him. I still did a feint, but I was able to come in and hit him, and this is why. So yeah. this is a very important point when we're doing our kickboxing, stick fighting, knife, whatever. And just so you know, all these tactics we're talking about, mainly these tactics are applicable when it's at distance. Like something happened in the fight, it broke out, now it's a kickboxing range. Now this is where these tactics really go in well. So from here, you see the distance. Now if Shelton does not move, if I step in and I lunge, you're gonna see I'm out, he's out of range. Okay, from this distance, this is a good fighting measure here. Fighting measure meaning, meaning he's right at the distance where if I do just, I don't move my rear foot. If I just take a big step, I lunge and I go out, he's out of range, so that means he's safe. That means I have to take an extra step to get to him. I have to step with my rear foot, I have to go a long ways, which makes it easy for him to see. Same thing in kickboxing, that fighting measure. So he's just outside the fighting measure. Okay, so he knows he's safe. So what I did in this clip, if you'll see, you see the distance between my feet? This is a nice, comfortable distance. Generally, when someone has that judge of distance, they're able to, to feel that distance and know how far away you are, they're feeling where your upper body is, their, your head, and they, they just kind of feel, after a lot of sparring, where you are. So what determines how far I can step in? This foot? My arm? No, it's the rear foot. This is the, the limiting factor, because this stays put, and I go as far as I can, and then I'm out of range. So the trick is, I'm gonna to try to bring my rear foot up where, without him noticing that I'm actually closer. So see here, look at my upper body, right? If I go here, I'm actually a lot closer now. Because now if I step and lunge, look how deep I can go. So the trick is to get this rear foot moved up a little bit without your partner realizing it. So right here, what I did is, as I'm moving around, right, you'll see that I kind of bring my feet closer together. That's it. That's the trick. Just, just like that. Yeah. So I'm moving around here. See if I'm here and I, I lunge in, can't hit him. Right? I'm moving around. I'm here. I lunge in. Now I can hit him. Easily. So I can get the depth. And usually somebody's going to move back. So see if I go here and he moves back a little bit, I can still make the shot. As far as trying to avoid the block, what I did instead of just hitting is then I did that kind of Zulu type thing that we do where I start here, and as he goes out, I bring it around to the inside. The other thing I did after I came in here is I went back and I had my stick up and ready to block. Because even, if maybe I go tunk and I hit him, and then I go up and he hits me back. So I wanna make sure after each shot, I'm ready to come back and block. So if you'll see, I'm, I moved in, I hit, and I come back and my stick is in a position where I can block. Same thing, empty hands. If you go in and you're striking, you get a shot and bang, you better not have your other hand down here. You better have it close where you can, can work your, your defense as well. 
So every time we're hitting, we're also programming in that defense to be there at the same time. Second part, same sort of idea with the footwork, moving around and getting the feet in a little bit close so that I can get in deeper. But then the way I'm gonna set this next technique up is as I'm going here, I'm gonna do what I call the C, which is just like drawing a C. If we're facing the same direction, that's a C. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start here to make him think about blocking on this side and notice I'm also gonna let my stick kinda, of, I, I think I'm twirling the stick and it kinda of goes in here because it makes it look like the tip is out a little farther and I'm gonna start in here but I'm actually gonna switch it because then that's a good way to go down. So if I fake, I'm going from inside to outside and I'm going high to low at the same time. So that's two types of feints put together. So it's really good. I'm, I'm looking up here and instead of going up in this quadrant, I'm going, I'm starting to come all the way down here. Now an experienced stick fighter like my partner there is kind of aware of those things. So I just want to, I just want to kind of make him react to that a little bit. Now what I do, I go one, but instead of coming down here, I'm going to go and stop halfway in and throw the thrust up the middle. So this whole thing is just to make him think, oh, he's coming down to my leg. Like he kind of faked me out. He's faking so he can hit to my leg and he's going to start thinking about that and then the thrust comes in the middle. So if you'll notice I go here and I get, I think I get only about this far in it and then up it comes. Now a very important component of this is the accuracy. Because if you watch in slow motion as I start to do it he's actually moving away this way, he's stepping and I still am able to get it on target. And the reason is just like aiming a, a firearm. If I just have this kind of out here somewhere, I'm not going to have as much accuracy, but I'm first going to index it. Okay? And then what I mean by indexing is I'm coming here and I'm going to bring that stick so my hand is right here. From this position, it's a straight shot up and I just kind of aim wherever I need that thing to go. Whereas out here, there's just too many variables. So I just get it to a position next to my hip and then up it comes and you have, with practice, you can get quite good accuracy with it. So I'm going here, and I go, what? And in it goes, right there. <laughs> after the little separation happened after that thrust, often when you, know, when you get somebody, they're gonna come back toward you. And so what happened was, he came forward, stepping forward. So a lot of times, oh, I'm going to move back and out of range there, right? Because I want to keep that distance. Well, what I did, instead of moving straight back, because if I'm moving back and he suddenly charges, I'm going to be kind of caught up. It's going to be difficult for me to move out. So instead, I immediately started to, to sidestep. So he's coming straight forward, and I'm thinking maybe he's going to charge right here. So I'm started sidestepping already. So notice, look at this distance here, okay? If he has his hand in just like this, okay, I can't hit his hand there. He takes a step at me, I take a step back, can't hit his hand. Takes a step at me, step back, can't hit his hand, okay? So we do the same thing again. He takes a step in at me, I sidestep, I can hit his hand. And that's what happened right there, is that he came in and I just kind of moved to the side and the hand was right there, suddenly in range, so I just give it a quick little pop. So same thing with your empty hand. You don't always want to just move back out, you want to be cutting angles going side to side. In a street situation, someone's charging you a little bit, you step off, boom, and there's your shot. They walk right into it, and because they're coming this way, you have a nice angle on them. So really important to understand the dynamics of one person moving straight line and not getting caught up in that straight line approach and, uh, okay, I'll back up in a straight line, which is natural. You get, cut that little angle so uh, target presents itself. Here's another one of those distancing tricks. So now we're going to look at an entry. So I did a roof block entry, but it's not so much the roof block entry, it's changing the distance 
And in this particular instance, it's about programming your, your partner, your opponent. So what I did here is, uh, I think he took a, maybe I think I took a swing at him, at his hand, he moved back, and then I got back out of range there. And notice as I get back, he's gonna do what naturally? Take a little step forward. Because there's no sense in him being 10 miles away. Okay, so then we're moving and he takes a swing at me, right? Oh, I get way out of there. And the same thing, he's getting used to me moving back, right? Each time I hit, I move back. He takes a swing, I move back. So he's getting comfortable where he is. And he's expecting now for me to move back. Then I take a little swing at his hand. I move back, but I just move back a little bit. I don't step all the way back. But still, because he's programmed now, he steps forward just a touch. I go, and now I make my roof block entry. I'm much closer. I made that distance, I came in, he took a hit, I made the roof block, and I was able to get a hold of his stick here. So I wasn't in deep enough to actually go over wrap and get a snake, but I was close enough to get the stick. And that's important to, just to understand because that means that if I did start out farther yet, I wouldn't have been close enough to get here, I would have been out here. There's no way I would have been able to get in close enough. So because of that little footwork trick, then I come in, right, and I get a hold of the stick here. Now, the first thing I do is what? I'm charging in, charging, boom, right? And I'm gonna come in. No, because I wanna avoid the clinch now. Especially because I have the stick, I have this controlled. Why would I get in there where he can hold my stick and now we're even again? So once I get a hold of the stick, I, my job is to keep him from clinching me and controlling my stick. Because this is a pretty good deal right here. <laughs> so. I came in and the first thing I did, because you can see he starts to move in a little bit as I gave the thrust, right? Because the thrust keeps distance, especially, and we're not going hard, but I'm touching enough. And you have to really give kudos to my partner there because he could have run through some of those shots, but he acknowledged them, right? Instead of just going, ah, never mind, right? He just, he acknowledged. So I didn't have to hit hard. I hit here and then I went to hit the hand and the arm right there because those are often there, and imagine in reality, if you smash the hand here, you smash the arm, and then I think I went down to the leg, but the key thing is I'm circling the whole time as I'm doing this, right? To keep him, to keep him away. Again, if I go, if I just stay in one place, he's just gonna crash right there. Now he's in. If I'm circling the whole time, it makes it harder, and I'm thrusting, trying to keep him away here.
But the key thing there, once I'm in, keeping the clinch, the, basically not so much keeping the clinch from happening as keeping him from getting to a neutral position. I have a dominant position here. I'm controlling his weapon. He's not controlling my weapon. I don't want to get into a position where now it's neutral. So same thing when you're actually clinching empty hand wise. We can put this down for a second here. If I get an underhook, guess what? I don't want him to get an underhook too. Now we're in that neutral position and we both have the exact same thing. If I get an underhook, I want to keep my, hand, my elbow in and I want to grab his wrist or get in the bicep here, do something so that I have a dominant position. That's a dominant position. I have the underhook. He doesn't. He's not controlling my upper body. So just a simple correlation. When you get into the clinch, you're looking for dominant position and trying to avoid neutral position. Of course, trying to avoid where your opponent turns it into a dominant position for himself.